when you're building up your portfolio of data projects, you're probably encountering a situation where you wish that there were more data for you to play around with. If that's the case for you, then you want to watch this particular video because I'm going to share with you an amazing Python library that will give you access to over hundreds of data sets in only a few lines of code. And so without further ado, let's dive in. All right, and so before we begin, let me show you the particular application that we're gonna build today using the Py data set. So you can see here that we've deployed this as a web application called Py data set. And we've created this in Python using the Streamlit library together with the Py data set library. And so let's dive in. All right, and so let's take a look under the hood how we've created this. So if you go to the, the Py data set repo, which I'll share in the video description, you're going to see that I forked this particular repo from the app starter kit, which allows me to quickly create a Streamlit app in only a few seconds. And so the only thing that I modified in this particular cloned repo is the requirements.txt. And so because we're using PyDataset, we're going to specify that in the requirements.txt file so that the web server will know which Python library to install. And so you see here that we have two. We want to install Streamlit, and we also want to install the PyDataset. Now let's take a look at the Streamlit app.py. And so this file will be the home of your web application. Let's have a look. And so let me show you side by side okay so you can see that this entire web application only takes 14 lines of code to create and if you delete the empty lines which was added for visual aesthetics which is what one two three four lines so essentially it's 14 minus four so it's 10 lines of code and so the first two lines of code will essentially be to import necessary libraries which includes streamlit and also pi data sets and so the title here is called balloon emoji pi data set, which is specified here as the input argument for the st.title command. And on line number six, we've created a variable called selected data, which allows you to select the data set that you would like to use from pi data set. And you can see that if you click on it, there's hundreds of data sets for you to choose and play around with. If you click on it, you'll see that the data is reflected in the web application. And so this particular input widget, which is interactive, where you select a data set and it will be displayed in the app instantaneously. It is made possible by the st.selectbox command. And because we're specifying that we want it to have it in the sidebar, it goes to the sidebar. And the sidebar could be minimized or expanded. And so as input argument here, we've specified select a data set, which is right here, the instructions, select a data set. And because we specified here data and then data set ID, it will be selecting the data set ID column from the data frame that is obtained by typing in or calling for data opening and closing parenthesis. So this function, data function. So let me show you. And we'll take a look here in the list of data sets. So it's right here. Data set ID is the first column that you see here. And because we specify data set ID, we therefore will have the name of the data set. From this column here, it will be displayed here, as you can see. Air passenger, air passenger. BJ sales, BJ sales. BOD, BOD. Okay. And on line number eight, we're going to specify the header tag to be data sets, which is right here, data sets. So this is specified using st.title. This is specified using st.header. And you'll notice that the size of this one is kind of like h1 heading, and this is like h2 heading. It is created using st.subheader for the list of data set and the selected data. On line number nine for the list of data sets and on line number 13 for the selected data. And you'll notice that the name of the selected data will be specified here 
and it is made possible by using the f string. So we specify to have the variable select the data, which is obtained from this select box here on line number six, and we're putting it here on line number 13. Okay, and the expandable here that you see, show list of data set, it is right here, line number 10 and 11. And when you click on it, you're going to see the st.write data, which is the data frame here. So the data frame here is comprised of two columns, the data set name, and also the description, the title. So what is the data set all about? So here you can see that we've selected the long data set, and you can scroll down here and try to find the lung description. And let's see, where should we put it? We're gonna put it underneath here, select the data. And so right before we have the data frame, why don't we have st.write, or how about this, st.info, and then data, and then title, because we want to print out the title of the selected data or the description, all right? And here, line number 14, st.info, data.title, and we'll save it. And it's saved, and we're going to refresh the app. Oh, okay, so we can see here that it is not only displaying the selected title, but also all of the title in the data frame. So let me modify this a bit. A few moments later. All right, so we got this, the title of the selected data set. So it is this particular line of code. So what we've done here is we've taken the entire data frame of the data set, and then we use the bracket in order to perform filtering on the pandas data frame. And a point of note here is that just a moment ago, I've updated the code to import also pandas as PD. And in the requirements.txt file, I've included pandas as well. So let me show you. So in the requirements.txt, I've also included pandas here. And here we've imported pandas as PD, just in case we need it in order to perform the filtering that I'm explaining right now. So data here will give you the entire data frame. So why don't I show you iteratively? So I'm going to comment out the remaining parts here so that we're going to see it clearly. So let me, let me show you here. Let me comment this out first. So if we do data, let's see what we get. So we get nothing. We need to say st.write. Why don't we put this into a variable called data set, and then we're going to write it out. Okay. Let me save it. All right. So we've created a variable called data set. And in this particular data frame, you're going to see that there's two columns, data set ID and title. So what we're going to do next is we're going to filter only the row that contains the desired data set that we want. So here we have selected air passenger, and we want to show only the row containing air passengers. So let's do that. So from data set here, or here, we're going to add opening and closing bracket, and then we're going to specify the column data set ID, and we're going to type in data, the name of the data frame, and then we're going to specify the column, and we need the string quotation, and then we specify data set ID. Okay, so essentially now we're creating only the column, for the data set ID, which is inside the bracket here. And it will do the filtering as we're going to specify here. And we say we want it to be equal, equal to the selected data from the drop down menu. 
and then we're going to specify that to be the variable called selected data because it contains the name of the data set ID. And then let's see what happens. So you should be able to see only the row for the selected data set. And now we're going to select only the title column here. So we're going to add that to the end. So we're adding the title. And in doing so, I'm going to delete that line. And you should be able to see only the title column. All right, and we have it here. So everything is in here, data set, title. So why don't I modify this to be just title data? so that it has the same naming vibe as selected data and the title data. All right, and so I'm gonna bring in the remainder of the code. And recall, we're gonna add the description underneath the header here, subheader. So we're gonna say title data. And then we have 17 lines of code now. We're going to save it. All right. So we have here, but instead of having another data frame, we're going to make that into st.info. We'll see if it works. If not, then we have to convert it into a string. All right, and so there you go. You have this description of the data set displayed underneath the header here. And so you notice also that the index number here is also displayed. So I'll leave this up to you as a homework. And let me know in the comment section, how did you remove this along with the object here? And so congratulations, you built your very own Streamlit web application using the Py dataset Python library. So let me know in the comment section which is your favorite data set. Thanks for watching until the end of the video. If you reached this far, please drop a cloud emoji. And while you're at it, smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and also make sure to hit on the notification bell so that you'll be notified of the next video. And happy streamlining. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science and please enjoy the journey.